Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day it is to be in the house of the Lord. God is good and he is here to move. How do you believe it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we lift our hands to you today and we worship you. Lord, the one and only true God, you are my Savior, my Redeemer, and I give it all to you this morning. Lord, I lift my hands and I praise your name. And Holy Spirit, move in this place. Oh, in a mighty way, Lord, we are hungry for more of you. We are hungry for revival. We are hungry, Lord Jesus, for your signs and wonders. We are hungry, Lord, for everything you have for us. And we worship you today, and we praise your name. Hallelujah. 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 Let's rise up and praise him this morning. Amen. Glory to his name. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the people of God sing His praise all over the land. Everyone in the valley, come and lift your voice, all those on the mountain top be glad and shout for joy, rise up and praise Him. He deserves our love. Rise up and praise Him. Worship the Holy One with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Rise up and praise Him. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the people of God sing His praise all over the land. Everyone in the valley, come and lift your voice. All those on the mountain top be glad and shout for joy. Rise up and praise Him. He deserves our love. Rise up and praise Him. Worship the Holy One with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Rise up and praise Him. Hallelujah. Let's give Him a shout this morning. Lord, we rise up and we praise you. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the glory and praise. Glory to your name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Oh, Father, you are with us always. Lord, you will never forsake us. You will go with us through everything we go through. And we lift our voice to you this morning, and we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. I believe you gave sight to the blind. I believe that the dead came to life. I believe there are wonders and signs, and you're still the same. I believe every word that you said. I believe there are scars in your hands. That your goodness is good without end, and you'll never change. I will tell of your wonders. King of your grace, the God of creation, knows me by name. The Lord is faithful, yesterday, now, and always, always. Your mercy is mighty, age after age, all generations will bow down and praise. The Lord is faithful, yesterday, now, and I believe you will come in the clouds I believe you are here even now In your presence I know there is power Power to save oh, I will tell of your wonders Sing of your grace The God of creation knows me by name The Lord is faithful yesterday generations will bow down and praise the Lord is faithful yesterday now and always always you are you are you always will be God 
God of creation knows me by name. The Lord is faithful yesterday, now and always, always. Your mercy is mighty, age after age. All generations who bow down and praise the Lord is faithful yesterday. generations will bow down and praise the Lord is faithful yesterday now and always yes you are yes you are you are hallelujah oh thank you Jesus thank you Lord you are faithful you are faithful Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, we love you so much. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken great are you lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out You are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Yes. Great are you, Lord, it's your breath in our lungs, so we Pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour. Shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing.
So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise in your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you you are you are mighty Lord oh we lift our hands to you we shout hallelujah to you Lord oh let your breath fill our lungs let your breath fill our lungs as we shout your praises Lord as we shout your praises Lord we shout hallelujah we shout the victory hallelujah Lord we cry holy oh Jesus yes we cry holy is your name it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only the one true god oh we praise you jesus thank you jesus oh praise your name jesus oh lord we just seek your face we're hungry lord for more of you in this place today Oh, holy is your name. We speak Jesus, we speak Jesus over this place today. Hallelujah. Let your glory flow in this place, Jesus. Let your healing virtues begin to flow over this body, Lord Jesus. Lord, we speak the name of Jesus over this body that your healing hand will raise us up, will restore us, Lord, back to new. Lord, we claim the victory over every attack of Satan. Satan, you are a liar, and we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, you have the victory. We give you glory. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I speak your name Jesus And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Yes Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shadows burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression. Jesus, your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life, break every stronghold, 
shine through the shadows Burn like a fire Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Break every struggle Shine through the shadows Burn like a fire Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness Over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Oh, 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 oh. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus, shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus, we shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, I speak Jesus, come on, shout his name, Jesus, we speak the name of Jesus, hallelujah, 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 holy, holy, hallelujah, oh we praise you Lord, shout his name, shout his name. Shout the name of Jesus over it. We speak your name. We speak healing. We speak power. Jesus, Jesus. Shout his name. Shout his name. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. We praise your name. Oh, we praise your name. Oh, glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shout your name. Lord, we declare salvation. 
salvation for our families, Lord, that don't know you. Lord, we declare healing for those bodies who need your touch. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Lord Jesus. Oh, we praise your name. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, yes, Jesus. Glory, says the Lord. Glory. I want to spread my glory in this place. I want to touch you. I want to heal you. I want to draw you closer. Come closer, my child. Come closer, my child, that you would touch the hem of my garment, that you would be healed. Oh, that you would be healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, just begin to press into him this morning. Let his power flow through you in this place. Father, we praise you, Lord, and just to pray in your spiritual tongue. Hallelujah, Lord, we claim the victory. We claim the healing, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we speak your name. We speak your name in this place, Jesus. Yes, I am high and lifted up. I am high and lifted up. I am the Lord your God Almighty. But yet I walk down here among you also. And you can touch the hem of my garment. You can just reach out and touch the hem of my garment if you so desire. Let your faith work. Let your faith flow. For not only am I high and lifted up, sitting at the right hand of my Father, but I am here amongst you as your brethren. I am here this very second. Can you not feel me? Can you not hear me talk to you? Just reach out and touch the hem of my God. Let that healing flow. Let it flow. It'll flow from the outside in and from the inside out. The very blood, the very blood that I shed is flowing. And the power that raised, raised me from that grave, it dwells in you as well, and it? It wants to make your mortal body alive and whole. Just accept it. Touch the hem of my God. Let us bless the Lord at all times. Yes. Let his praise continually be in our mouths. Yes, yes. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. Yes. The humble will hear it. Rejoice. Yes. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. They, look, they who look to him will be radiant. Yes. And their faces will never be ashamed. Yes. yes. Oh, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him. Ooh. He saved me from all my troubles. Yes. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him yes. and rescues them. Yes. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes, my Lord. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Yes, praise. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For to those who fear him, there is no want, no lack. Even the young lions lack in such a hunger. But they who seek the Lord shall not be in want for any good thing. Yeah. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves length of days that he may see good? Yeah. 
Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace yes. and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of all. Yes. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. But the Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Yes. Yes. The Lord is walking among us this morning. He is here to touch your bodies. And I just, I feel strongly that the Lord is here to heal. <clears throat> As he said in our word earlier, just reach out and touch the hem of his garments. And I just ask that you take a step of faith this morning. If you need a touch in your body, or if you have a loved one who needs a touch in their body and they're not here or able to be here, stand up for them. But I just ask you right now to raise your hands to him this morning. He is here to touch. He is here to deliver. He is faithful. He is our stronghold. He is our, our strong tower. He is here to deliver. He is here to save. He is here to heal. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing over this body. Father, those who have their hands raised today, we ask, Lord, for your divine touch on their body. In the name of Jesus, that you would renew their faith, that you would build their faith, that you would show your power and your glory over this body today. Father, we reach out to you for guidance, for wisdom, for power, Lord Jesus, and for understanding. Lord, reveal the truth to us today as we seek you and as we seek your power as we seek your healing over this congregation and lord we thank you for the glory we thank you lord jesus for the victories that are at hand we thank you lord for the deliverance the miracles that are taking place here today as we shout your name hallelujah and we praise you jesus hallelujah thank you lord for your touch thank you lord for your deliverance thank you lord for your healing virtues that are flowing through us right now, Lord, as we reach out and touch you, touch you, Lord Jesus, you are faithful and you are just. Hallelujah. No Hallelujah. weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we claim the victory. We claim your healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout to him this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. We shout the victory. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallowed be thy name as we come before you, Jesus. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us, as we forgive the ones who sinned against us. Forgive them, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come, Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, 
forgive us as we forgive the ones who sinned against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And let your kingdom come. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours. For heaven and ever, the kingdom is yours. Yes, it's yours, it's yours. It's yours. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Right here in my heart. On earth as in heaven. Right here in my heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, let your will be done. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. God is awesome. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. It's good seeing everyone here this morning, especially our, our family from Maine. We're glad they're visiting with us again today. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm excited about what God's doing in the United States. Have you been seeing the news about revival breaking out Amen. and some liberal <laughs> colleges <laughs> and universities? Hallelujah. I want to tell you, it's not by my, <laughs> not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And you know what? I'm expecting God to even pour out His Spirit more upon Grace Point Church. Amen. Amen. I want more of God. Amen. Anyone else want more of God? Amen. Shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Whatever God's doing in the land, I don't want to be on the outside looking in. I want to be in the middle of what He's doing. Because when I'm in the middle of what God's doing, blessing after blessing is going to come, and we're going to push back the gates of hell. Hallelujah. People will be saved. People will be delivered. People will be healed. And the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will be triumphant for us who are in the middle of what God's doing. So, Father, let your will be done. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I know some of you are probably thinking and with the, that ball game that happened, I guess, a little while ago, that God's will was done, right? <laughs> Seeing all the red chief stuff here. <laughs> God got it going right there, right? <laughs> all the redness. You know what? I am sure that there was a lot of joy and excitement when that game was over. Yes, there was. But there's even greater joy when we're in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to continue on the series we're in, the Lord's Prayer. Why do we even need to pray at all? And this one is titled, What's the Big Deal About Forgiving Our Debtors? <clears throat> Usually when I preach on this subject, I have people afterwards tell me, I'd rather you preach on tithing. <laughs> but before I, I, I get there, this, la this last week we preached on when God forgives us, He forgives us completely, 100% cleanses us, and we are to let the guilt go. How many remember anything about that message? If you didn't remember it and you need to hear it again, go back and listen to it, okay? And I just want to share a little testimony that we got left to us, is that a person was visiting last week and they said they needed to hear that for the last 30 years they've been protecting their guilt. You know what? 
I believe God ordained that whole service necessary just for one person. But God also ordained something in that service for each and every one of us. Amen? That's how our God works. And never underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit can do. Because what I, I could preach to now to eternity and not do anything to accomplish much, but the Holy Spirit can do one thing in one second and accomplish something so great and marvelous we can't even begin to understand it. And when the Holy Spirit's moving, He orchestrates things. He'll speak to this person, he'll speak to this person, he'll have this person do this and this, that, and all of a sudden all comes together, and there's no doubt about it. The Holy Spirit put it all together to meet someone's need, to minister to them. So, saints of God, today I am not ashamed of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to stand up and say today I'm a Pentecostal believer. Amen. I'm not ashamed to stand up and say I believe the Word of God. And whatever the Word of God declares to be true, it is true. It's not my opinion that matters. It's not your opinion that matters. It's what God's opinion is. Because when it's all said and done, we're going to stand before God one day, and the only thing that's going to matter is what we've done with Jesus. Amen? So we're going to continue in this series here. And as I was preparing the message for this series, one of the things that the Holy Spirit spoke to me was this, is that one of the subtlest traps that Satan gives to us as Christians, that traps more Christians than any other thing, is unforgiveness. Did you understand what he's saying? More Christians are taken captive to unforgiveness than any other sin. And when it comes to forgiveness... We line up in two different camps. The first camp is this, those who need to be forgiven. Amen. The second camp is this, those who need to grant forgiveness. And what I have discovered in my life, and I'm sure you have too, is that every person is for forgiveness when they mess up. Then they come in and demand forgiveness and expect total forgiveness, just like, yeah. amen? But I've also discovered this. Not every person is for forgiveness when they are the ones that need to grant forgiveness to someone who has hurt them. I didn't get any amens on that one. <laughs> Amen. All right. You see, saints, the trap is this. If we do not forgive our debtors, it is going to bring great consequences to our lives here and now and will also can affect eternity. Forgiveness is not something that we need to be messing around with. It's something that we need to grant when it is necessary to grant it. Can I get an amen there? Yes. Now, I'm thinking about a story to share about forgiveness. And one of the greatest stories that, I can, comes, that comes to my mind, and I know I've shared this story before, about Corrie Ten Boone. Anyone ever heard of her? Yes. You want to learn about forgiveness, read her book. I think it's called The Hiding Place, if I remember correctly. And she is an example of what it means to grant forgiveness in one of the most difficult situations that you can even think of or imagine. And I want to just kind of share her story just briefly here to get us going into this message. The year was 1944. Anyone remember that year? Well, there might be a few around yet anyway. Anyway, at this time, Nazi Germany had occupied occupies Holland and an elderly watchmaker and his family are actively involved in the Dutch underground. And how, what they're doing, they're hiding Jewish people in a secret room in their home, and they know it's a dangerous thing to do. And members of the Ten Boon family courageously help men, women, and children escape Hitler's death roll, uh, Hitler's roll call of death. And yet one day, the hiding place was discovered, and the watchmaker was arrested, and soon imprisoned, and he dies in the prison camp. And then the tender-hearted, Corey's tender-hearted sister, Betsy, she went to the camp and died there in the camp also. And then the Nazi 
And she was then seized and put also in the Nazis' concentration camp. And Corey wondered, you know, am I able to get through this? Am I going to live through this whole situation? And then she thought at one point, said, am I going to be able to forgive my captors? Now, let's just kind of back up there just for a moment. Your the dad's died, your sister's dead, you're into a, in a prison camp, a, a concentration camp that you should not be in. And then she's thinking, am I going to be able to forgive my captors? How many would say, I'm ready to do it right this minute? I don't think many of us would fall into that camp. You say amen? And while she was in this camp, she went through some horrible, horrible, horrible situations. And she said, I just cling to a portion of God's word to help me get through what I'm facing. And I want to say something right now. No matter how difficult the situation you're facing, God's word will help you get through it. And you need to claim God's promises. No matter if it's unforgiveness, no matter what the situation may be, no matter how bad you're being abused, no matter how bad things may look, God's word has an answer for us. Can I get an amen there? And Psalms 27 and 12 through 14 was the word that she held on to. And it says this. Do not turn me over to the desires of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. Verse 13, I remain, what's that next word? I remain what? Confident. I remain what? I remain what? I remain confident. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Today, saints of God, I'm telling, us, telling each and every one of us, we remain, need to remain confident because I am going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We all say, well, we'll see the goodness on the other side. Yes, I know we will, but I also know this. My God wants me to see the goodness on this side also. And I have a confidence that no matter what I'm facing, no matter what I'm going through, no matter how big the trial is, my God is for me. Yes. And if my God be for me, there ain't no power in hell that can be against me. Exactly. Amen. And verse 14, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. And that whole idea here of waiting doesn't mean idly sitting by and waiting. It means like waiter waiting on tables. I am going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to love the Lord. I'm going to keep my confidence in the Lord. And if that can get Corey Tan Boone through that concentration camp, guess what? No matter what any of us are facing... God can get us through it also with confidence in who he is. He is the great I am, not the great I was. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's my savior. He's my all and all. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And Corey, Boone, Corey Ten Boone got through that concentration camp. Amen. Amen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Then two years later, after she was out, she went to, uh, to a church in Munich where she, uh, you know, she came from Holland to Germany there to bring her message that God does indeed forgive people. Isn't that a good message? And as she's giving her message, she's teaching them about forgiveness. In the crowd, there's a there's solemn face staring back at her. And, you know, people are just kind of like good stoic people are. I can say that because I'm German background. And as they were filing out after her message was done, a balding, heavy-set man moves toward her. He's wearing a gray overcoat. He's clenching a brown felt hat. And then, then Corey says, suddenly scenes flash back in her mind of the blue uniform, a visor cap, with skulls and crossbones on it, and a huge room with harsh lights overhead, and the humility of walking naked past this man that is now standing before her. You know what's happening right now? 
all those memories of past hurts are rushing back. And the man said, you mentioned the concentration camp, and he says this, I was a guard there. But since that time, I have become a Christian. And I know that God has forgiven me for the cruel things I did. But I would like to hear it from your lips as well. And he extended his hand toward her and asked her, Will you forgive me? Corey talks about it seemed like it went on for ever and ever and ever as she wrestled with this whole idea of forgiveness. But what was she there just teaching on? God's got a sense of humor. <laughs> she forgave him there on the spot. What would have happened if she hadn't forgave him? Luke 17, 3 through 4 says this. Take heed, oh, say, so watch yourself. For if your brother's sin, rebuke him. And if he repents, what's that next word? Forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, do what? I don't like that. Anyone else not like that? But here's what's important. Forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness is about you being free from what's happened to you in your past. And what's happening in your past no longer has control over you when you learn to forgive those who have trespassed against you. And let me, I'll be up here right up front here. I'm not saying that is the easiest thing in the world to do. But I can promise you, you can do it. Because I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. He didn't say I can do some things. I can do all things. And I can stand up here and declare on this one, there's been times I have struggled, but I also can say there's times that I've had victory over this and when people could not understand how I could forgive something that's happened to me, and I can say I don't hold unforgiveness. I refuse to hold unforgiveness against anybody. But when I make that statement, you know what happens? The memories, boom, boom, boom. And that's where i got to rise up in the name of Jesus, take authority over those memories, take authority over the thoughts in my mind, and say, I will not allow unforgiveness to put a stronghold on my life again because I'm standing upon the word for who the Son is set free is what? Free indeed. How many are free today? Yes. Amen. So it leads me to the first point here of the message. Why we must forgive the debts of others. And the first point is this. God has chosen to forgive us our debts. Now, what's the key word in there? God has what? Chosen. chosen. Well, let me tell you something right here. Just as God cho chose to forgive us our debts, we have to choose, say choose, to forgive others their debts. And I want you to see and I want you to understand this. It is a choice that each and every one of us has to make. And I'm not saying it's an easy choice, but when you make that choice, I guarantee you the power of the Holy Spirit will be there to help you fulfill that choice you have made. And I can tell you right now, I can, I can tell you right now, 100%, it's easy to choose not to forgive. It's natural. I don't have to sit down and think, Man, should I hold unforgiveness or not here? 
when someone comes after me, someone's hurt me, someone's done something they shouldn't have done to me, I don't have to think about it because it's a natural part of my fallen nature to immediately say, I hate that person. And I remember a time in my own life personally when something happened to me. It was, I was a young kid. Something happened to me. It was not a good thing that happened to me. And I remember the moment I said in my mind, I hate you. I made that determination. I made that choice right that very moment. I hate you. And I had probably around that, probably about 10 years old at that time. And I carried that hate for that person until I was about 16. And you know what happened? I got saved. And the Holy Spirit started dealing with me about I needed to forgive that person in my life. I would tell you who the person is, but I know it's being recorded. <laughs> and I struggled. And I struggled. And I struggled. And then finally, I got to the place, just as I chose to hate this person, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I chose to forgive this person. That word, that, that choosing is so vitally important. We're waiting for God to take it all away, throw it away, God, get rid of it. And God's saying, I'm waiting, well, I'm waiting for you to release it. And once you release it, hallelujah, the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you and gives you the strength and the ability to let go of it. Amen? And after I did that, I could talk to that person. All of a sudden, it was like, Argh. and I have to come back and say, all right, I'm not going to take it back. I'm not going to take it back. I'm not going to take it back. I choose to forgive again. And the more I did that, the more I did it, I got farther and farther apart till I got to the place, oh, well, that's just them. No big deal. That's just them. And all of a sudden, all the power that unforgiveness had over my life was totally 100% broken. That's the freedom God wants us to walk in, and that's a stronghold the devil wants you bound by, yes. is that unforgiveness. Now, God has chosen to forgive us our debts, and I want to read Matthew's Gospel, the 18th chapter, starting in verse 23. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wants to settle his accounts with his servants. And as he began, began to settle, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold. I want you to keep that in mind, 10,000 bags of gold. I think the King James says 10,000 talents, who, who brought to him, since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all, and all that he had to be sold to repay the debt. And at this, and at this the servant, which is us, fell on his knees before him, says this, be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let him, what? Go. Now, the, I'm, not, I'm going to read some more of that story as we get through the message, but because of time, I don't want to read the rest of it. I'll read it as we go here. But what Jesus is doing here in this portion of Scripture is he's answering a, a question that the apostle Peter gave to him. The apostle Peter asked him, Lord, how many times should we forgive someone who's done something wrong against us? Well, the Jewish tradition was this. You forgive them three times, then you didn't have to forgive them ever again. So Peter comes along, and he wants some spiritual superiority points. He says, Jesus, I'm going to ask you this question. I already know the answer. The answer is three, but I want to show you how spiritual I am. And Peter says, Lord, I'm going to forgive him seven times. I'm going to double it and add one. I can just so superior because of how great I am. I'm going to forgive seven times. I'm better than everyone else. And I love Jesus' answer. No, Peter, not seven times, but 70 times 70. That turns out to 4,900 times that I need to forgive the same person. And I know some people have got their notebook out. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> and they get to 4,900, I've arrived. No, you're not, because that's not what Jesus was meaning there. <laughs> what Jesus is meaning is this, as many times as necessary, you forgive them. Again, 
It's not about them. It's about you being free. Everyone who agreed said, Amen. So one of the reasons God chose to forgive us was this. And this is A on the outline. The magnitude of our sin debt. Now, I got thinking about this for a moment here. And I got on the, on the computer and I Googled in. How much is 10,000 talents worth today in gold? And you know what the figure came back as? $3.48 billion. Astronomical amount of debt, right? <laughs> a massive amount of debt. And I imagine, since the king's calling in, they're probably going through a recession or something. I don't know. You know, high prices or whatever going on. So he's calling in his debt. Well, how long would it take to pay back $3.48 billion? It would take 200,000 years of labor, 60 million days of work to pay off that debt. That's our sin debt. Now, I don't know how this guy mismanaged all this to get into this situation, but I can tell you right now, he is in an impossible situation. He cannot pay it off. And the only thing he can really do if in, the, in the natural there would be file bankruptcy. But you know what bankruptcy was in that day? You, your wife, your kids, and everything you own was sold off and you became slaves until the day you could pay off that impossible debt. Could he pay off that impossible debt? Not whatsoever. To spend the rest of your life as a slave because of your sin debt. You talk about the, 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 the awesomeness of God's forgiveness. Amen? Look at the, the magnitude of God's forgiveness and grace. Saints, I am so grateful today for the grace of God. Can anyone give me an amen? amen. Matthew, 28, Matthew 18 and starting in verse 26. At this, the servant fell on his knees and said, Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay everything. In verse 27, the servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and did what? Do you think the master realized that he couldn't pay that debt off? You think the master's really stupid? The master knew 100% that man could not pay back his debt. And yet the master forgave him 100% and let him go. The, the, verse 27, the, the servant's master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let him go 100%. I want to tell you, saints of God, that is an awesome God that we serve. Amen? Leads me to the next point. Why must we forgive the debts of others? Because we must choose to pay it forward. Say, pay it forward. We're right now in our country, everything is about paying it forward, which is not a bad thing. You know, I, I remember, uh, 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 it's just kind of a simple thing, going to McDonald's, and I was in the line, and I got to pay for my bill, and someone paid my bill before I got there. So you know what I did? I paid it forward and paid for the car behind me. They didn't tell me, though, they were ordering for the football team at the high school. <laughs> The servant was overjoyed. He was grateful. And he should have been so grateful that he would pay it forward because his $3.5 billion debt has been totally canceled. He's let free. He doesn't have to go to prison. His family doesn't have to go to prison. His possessions aren't saved. He is a free man. Amen? So how should have the servant responded? Well... Leads me to the next point. The magnitude of an uncompassionate servant who had their debts forgiven. Matthew 18 and 28. But when the servant went out, where did he go out from? He just left the master who forgave him that big billion dollar debt. He found one of his fellow servants who owed him 
100 silver coins. Well, I got to stop there. I figured out what 10,000 bags of gold is worth. And I'm going to find out what 1,000 silver coins are worth. And you know what they're worth? $237. What's $237 versus $4.3 billion? Or $3.5 billion, basically. And look at this. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. And when this man could not pay back what he owed this guy, he had him thrown into prison. Is there something wrong here? Majorly wrong? How many are forgiven by the blood of Jesus today? You totally forgiven? 100% forgiven? Who is that person, if I mentioned their name, that would cause your skin to crawl this moment? Who is that person, when you think they're coming, you want to avoid them? It's quiet in here. You see... The guy who was forgiven that great big debt got physical. He choked him, demanded payment right now, had him thrown into prison. And, and you know what? Wow. Leads me to the next point here. The magnitude of an evil heart not granting debt forgiveness. Because look at verse 29. He fell, his, his fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him to be patient with me and I will pay back. Where did we just hear that before? That's the exact thing the first servant said. Now, one who owes him a, a Peasley $237 is saying, be patient with me. I will pay back. And what did the guy do? Choked him. Threw him into prison and would not forgive his debtor. <clears throat> Ephesians 4.32 says this, be kind and compassionate to those people you like. Be kind and compassionate to those who agree with you politically. Be kind and compassionate to those who look like you and smell like you. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ, God forgave you. Again, I'm going to get this into your heart. Forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness is about you being free. Amen? Amen. Now, this leads me to point number three here. The grave consequences of not forgiving our debtors. And this is the part that we may not like to hear today, but I'm not here to tickle these. I'm here to declare God's truth so God's people can be set free from the snares of Satan and be that all that God has called you to be. Amen? Amen. Verse 31. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that happened. Jump down to verse 35. This is how, this is Jesus speaking, and this is the whole meaning of this parable. The whole, this is the main number one point of this parable here. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brothers or sisters from the heart. So what's the consequence here? Well, that leads us to the magnitude of the king's estimation of the forgiven servant with a great debt counseled. This is what the father says about this one. He didn't forgive his brother his debt. Verse 32. Then the master called the servant in. What's that next phrase? You wicked servant. 
Now, I looked up wicked here in the Greek. This word wicked means useless, evil, immoral. You know, what made this wicked, this servant wicked? It wasn't his previous debt. His previous debt's been forgiven. 3.5 billion. It's gone. It's gone. What made him a wicked servant? It's his new debt of unforgiveness. You wicked servant, he said, I canceled all your debt of yours because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? Verse 34, in, his, in anger, and this is righteous anger, his master handed him over to the jailer to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. That word jailer there means torturer. And he's handed over to the jailer to be tortured where? In prison until he could do what? Can he pay it back? No. Ooh, the king is livid. The king is ticked off. He flat out tells him, you should have forgiven your brothers and sisters in Christ there. You should have forgiven them simply because I chose to forgive you. You, need to, you have to choose then to forgive them. Is that hard? It's difficult. But I know it can be done. Leads me to the next point is this. The magnitude of the personal cost for not forgiving isn't worth it. Choosing not to forgive your debtors is bringing torture to your life, not theirs. And I wish I could, I wish I could get people to understand that. And I, was read, I read a story, an article I was written about a psychologist it said that if he could just teach people to forgive people who hurt them, he said he could clear out 75% of his clients. Because their unforgiveness was bringing a mental and emotional problems to their lives. And I can tell you, I know personally, from personal experience, when I held on to the unforgiveness and bitterness, it was like chains all around me. Because everywhere I went, I thought about them. What are they doing? What have they done? As a matter of fact, they were beginning to rule and reign in my life because I, I did not choose to forgive them. And the moment I made the decision to, to forgive them, guess what happened? Those chains came off, and they no longer had power and control in my life. I took it back. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. You see, unforgiveness, is, it affects your health. It can cause sickness. It can cause heart attack. It can cause stroke. There's all kinds of medical evidence of what unforgiveness does to you, your body. It's a horrible, horrible thing. That's one of Satan's greatest traps and why we need not to get involved in that. Can I get an amen there? Amen. But I want to show you something here. How many are always looking for loopholes to get out of what God has shown you to do? Hey, I have. Because when I, was trying, when I needed to forgive this person, and when I read that scripture I read earlier, it says to forgive their, your brothers and sisters, right? To forgive your brothers and sisters in Christ. And I could look back and go, they're not a brother and sister in Christ. <laughs> so I don't have to forgive. <laughs> Loopholes. It's kind of like our government, right? Then I found this stupid scripture. I'm being sarcastic. Matthew 6 and 15. But if you do not forgive, the King James says, men, their sins. Now look at the danger here. Your father will not forgive your sins. And guess what? That didn't say brother and sister. It said men. Again, forgiveness is not about you. I mean, it, it's, not, it's not about them. It's about you. Now, what do I need to do here if I'm holding on to unforgiveness? And if I hold on to unforgiveness, my father will not forgive what? Who is worth going to hell over? 
that may mean you're going to have to forgive an ex. That may mean you're going to have to forgive a son or a daughter. You may have to forgive a spouse, a brother and sister, a family member. And here's what I've noticed. The ones that we need to forgive are usually those we love the most. Because if someone out, someone out there we don't know gives us sign language going down the road, who cares? But if someone we know and love gives us sign language, then we care. Only those that we love the most, the closest to us, are the ones who can really hurt us. Everyone agreed, said? Amen. Amen. Now, Luke 6 and 38 reads this way. Give, and it will be given to you. Everyone agree, said? Amen. Now, where do you hear that scripture used most? Tithing. Don't we? We hear that scripture used over and over and over again for tithing. Well, I want to tell you, it does apply to tithing. But the story is not about tithing. This thing here, whatever you're given, give and it will be given unto you a good measure. Now look at this. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. Now, the whole idea here, this is a scripture on, on sowing and reaping. You know what, saints? If you want forgiveness in your life, guess what you got to give a measure of? If you want to have God meet your financial needs, guess what you got to give a measure of? You want joy in your life, guess what you got to give a measure of? Amen? If you want peace in your life, guess what you got to give a measure of? This whole thing here is dealing with everything in our lives. When we give, we get back the same thing that we give. No matter what it is. If I give out anger, what am I going to get back? If I ran up to one of you and put my big finger in your face, you're no good rotten, you're just a terrible, terrible person. What are you going to give me? You're going to give me another finger back, amen? <laughs> and you're going to point it in my face and you're going to tell me boom, 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 boom. And guess what? You always get more than you give. Pressed down, shaken together, and they'll be poured into what? Your lap. For, what, for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And the whole idea here is this, saints of God. If you don't, you, if you're, you got to be in a place in your life, if you're not willing to forgive, that you have to live a sinless, perfect life and never need forgiveness the rest of the time you're here on earth. Because if you ever need forgiveness and are not willing to give forgiveness, God says, I will not. But we're under grace. Yes, we are under grace. Amen? But God warns us. Ananias and Sapphira were under grace. Amen? Now, with all that said... I want to tell you real quickly what forgiveness is not. And you'll have to write these down quick, okay? And this is some of the reasons why I think people choose not to forgive. And the first thing is this. Forgiveness, forgiving our debt, is not excusing sin. We have this misconception in our minds that if I choose to forgive them, I am saying what they did to me, I'm excusing the wrong that they did to me. And I'm saying right, so ever, right now, I'm not excusing anything. I'm just choosing to live free. The next thing here, you know, think about Jesus for a moment. He encountered the mob of people who brought the lady caught in adultery. They came with the stones. They're going to kill her. Did Jesus excuse what she did? No. He forgave her. He made everyone in the crowd take a look at their lives. And one by one, they dropped their stones and walked away. And Jesus said to her, where are those who condemn you? And Jesus said this. Neither then do I condemn you. But he said this very important phrase next. Go and sin no more. Didn't excuse it. And when I choose to forgive someone, I'm not excusing what they've done. Amen? The next thing, forgiving our debt, is not circumventing God's justice. Romans 12 and 19 says this. Do not take revenge. Revenge. 
Isn't that fun? Isn't taking revenge fun? Come on, don't lie. Look at me like I'm a lying up here. It's fun to take revenge. And this. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, saith the Lord. And what God is simply saying is this. You and I do not have the right to bring God's justice against the person that has harmed us in our lives. And here's what can happen, saints, is that we, not being all-knowing and understanding everything, can wrongly condemn and judge someone when we don't have all the facts. Anyone agree with me there? And when we step in and bring our justice we're interfering with God's justice. Amen? Amen? Now, what about the law taking care of something? If, if it's involved with the law, God established the government we have around here. I, I believe it or not, God established governments. The gift, one of the gifts to the church is the gift of governments. <clears throat> God may bring his judgment through the civil things. But here's what I do know. I have no right to judge and condemn anybody whatsoever. None whatsoever. Your forgiveness allows God to execute his judgment and in his way and in his time and the way he wants it done. And I, knew, I can tell you right now, his justice is righteous, it's holy, it's just, all those kind of things, but it'll be nothing like yours because in God's justice, he desires for that person to come to a right relationship with him. Amen? Amen. The next thing forgiveness is not. Forgiveness, forgiving our debt is not waiting for time to heal all wounds. That is one of the most stupid things I've ever heard in my life. Amen? You know what heals wounds? Not time. Jesus. Amen. And I've also discovered this. Some people don't want the wound healed. They enjoy, literally enjoy, griping about the pain. Poor little old me. No one has ever suffered like I've had to suffer. No one's ever had this thing happen to them. Oh, please feel sorry for me. Wow, 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 wow. Gloom, despair, and agony all over me. Is that what you want to live by? And some people enjoy that. And they choose not to forgive. So they have something to make them feel better about themselves. I don't know. But I tell you right now, saints, God wants us to live in healing over all the wounds. Can I get a big amen there? The next thing forgiving our debt is not is this. And you got, let make sure you read this with me clearly. Forgiving our debtor is not letting them off our hook, but moving them to God's hook. And what I'm saying by this is, is that we need to get to a place in our relationship with God. We never put them on our hook. We immediately take them to God's hook. When I put them on God's hook, I'm releasing my right to get even. I'm releasing my right to make that other person suffer. I'm releasing you know, my, my thoughts I have against them that they owe me something. I am releasing them into God's hands, and God can take care of it a whole lot better than I can. You say amen? The next thing forgiveness is not is this. Forgiving our debtors is not the same as reconciliation. Say reconciliation. It takes two to be reconciled. Because I've heard people say this, I will not forgive them unless they first ask me to forgive them. Uh-uh. They may never ask you to forgive them. And when I, when I am truly where I need to be with the Lord, I make a decision, I'm going to forgive them whether I reconcile back with them or not. And I also want to say it this way, saints. There are some times that when we need to forgive people that God does not want us to reconcile back with them. 
If you're in an abusive type relationship, if you go back to that relationship, you're going to have shotguns held to your head and you're going to have black eyes and beaten and bruised. God needs you to forgive them, not for their sake, but for your sake. But God doesn't expect you to be reconciled back into that kind of situation. You know, you got someone you've been living with maybe was a, was a drug addict and they caused you to be on drugs. You got set free from drugs, but you have unforgiveness towards them. God's going to set you, deliver you, set you free. I believe that. But God's not saying go back to that drug situation. So there's times that God wants us to reconcile when we can, but there's times we can't reconcile. But whether we can or whether we can't, we still have to forgive that person because it's about you being free. Amen? You're not saying they're not guilty. You're not saying they're not wrong. You just need to be free. Amen? The next thing is forgiving our debtors is not saying that they did, they did nothing wrong in their behavior. And sometimes we say, well, if I forgive them, I'm saying that they did nothing wrong. And that's not what forgiveness is saying. There needs to be forgiveness, especially because they have done something wrong. Amen? So forgiveness is, is acknowledging that there, is, you know, as there was unjust, unexcusable behavior. It was sin, but I choose to forgive anyway. Give it to God. My, uh, Luke 23 and 34 says this. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are what? And then they divide up his clothes and cast lots. Can you imagine that? After all they did to Jesus, and he looks down there and says, Father, if it had been me, send your angels. Fire and brimstone. Tomahawk missiles. Make grease marks on the ground where they're at. Yep, 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 yep. We all would have done that. <laughs> but he looks down and says, Father, forgive them if they don't know what they do. I think Stephen did that too, didn't he? Hmm. The next thing forgiveness is not is this. Forgiving our, our debt is not based on what is fair. John 16 and 33, I have, told you, I have told you these things so that you might have, may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the Hallelujah. world. When I can get to the place and realize life is not fair, these things are going to happen to me, but Hallelujah. Jesus has overcome the world, and he's for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And hear me, life will never be fair on this side of glory in these mortal bodies. It never will be fair until this old order of things is totally destroyed one day, and we get to see Jesus face to face in all his glory when the trap of God sounds and the dead in Christ rise first, and that's who alive and remain to change in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Then those things will be fair. That's right. But until that time... Anyone who's taught you that bad things never happen to Christians has told you a life in the pits of hell. Because right. bad things happen to Christians. It rains on the just and the unjust. But Jesus said, come that you might have life and have it more abundantly because the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? Amen. The next thing here about forgiveness is not forgiving, forgiving our debtors is not being a weak martyr. Oh, I'm just a martyr. This is my cross I got to carry. Blah, 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 blah. If that's the case, Jesus was a weak martyr. Amen? Forgiveness is being strong enough to be Christ-like and forgive. The next thing forgiveness is not is this. Forgiving our debt is not a natural response. <laughs> It's not natural for us. There's where we have to make our choice that's not based on our emotions and our feelings, but based on truth. You should know the truth, and the truth will what? And when you make that choice, the supernatural power of God will come upon you to help you fulfill that mission. Everyone agreed, said? Amen. Amen. The next thing forgiveness is not is this. Forgiving our debtors is not denying the hurt. It hurts, doesn't it? Yes. And there's nothing spiritual about denying the hurt. Lord, this hurt me. I'm struggling with it, Lord. 
I don't have to deny the hurt. Denying the hurt is not an act of faith. I don't have to deny reality. The reality is this hurt, and it hurt bad. So I don't have to go around moping and pouting and short-tempered and lashing out and screaming, I'm hurt. Now, I'm gonna, I got this little mission story I like. On the Lord's Day, a group of missionaries and believers were in New Guinea where they gathered to, absorb, to, to, gather to observe the Lord's Supper. And after one young man sat down, the missionary recognized that the young man's body just began to tremble. And, 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 it, and he could tell that the young man was under some kind of great stress, an emotional stress. And then after a moment, the young man got quiet again. And the missionary whispered, what was it that troubled you? And the, and the young man said, ah, the man who just came in killed my father and ate my father's body. And now he has come in to remember the Lord with us. At first, I didn't know if I could endure it, but it's all right now. He was washed in the same precious blood, and so together they had communion. It's a marvelous thing, the work of the Holy Spirit. And just that moment, he made a choice to what? Forgive. The next thing forgiveness is not. Forgiving our debtors is not being a doormat. You know, you know, if you loan someone money and they don't pay you back and then you, they want more and they want more and you keep getting more and you never get paid back, you don't have to keep, paying it, keep loaning them money. Amen? You don't have to be a doormat. Hallelujah. Amen? The next thing forgiveness is not Forgiving our debtors is not forgetting what happened to us. Does that make some of you go, oh. How many have ever had something bad happen to you? Did you just forget it? You know the only one who can forgive and forget is God. He's powerful enough to do how he does it. I don't know, but I can't do it. So what does it mean? That, that, you know, that I'm not forgetting what happened to me. Well, here's what it is. The idea of forgetting here is not to allow the hurt to control your life any longer. What happened to me as a young man, when I made that decision to forgive, that hurt no longer controls my life. It didn't say it didn't happen. It happened. And I can tell you as a young boy, that's etched in my mind. But guess what? That no longer has power and authority in my life anymore. Now it's like, yeah, it happened. Oh, well. Because it's made me the person I am today. By choosing to forgive and letting it go. You say, but you don't know how bad they abuse me. I may not. But it doesn't have to control your life today. And what happens is if we allow that to control our lives today, we become the victims. Everybody's fault. The reason I stole the, 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 I stole the car is because when I was two years old, my mom left me in my pampers too long and I got diaper rash. Constantly blaming, blaming someone else, someone else, someone else, someone else. You know what? When I let go of it, I'm free. Amen? And this one more here is this, and I am closing. And Everyone who agreed said, forgiving our debtors is not a feeling, but a choice. I will forgive when I feel like it. How many ever said that? If you're saying that, I can guarantee you one thing right now, you will never feel like it. Never. Because it's part of your fallen nature. And when we come to forgiveness, it's not how I feel. It's a choice I have to make. But here's what I've learned. When I, first make that, when I first made the choice to forgive, it did not feel like I had forgiven anything. The hurt, the pain, the anguish was still all there. And every time I got to the place where I did forgive, it came back. I have to make that same progress again. You know, got to go over this whole thing again. But I finally got to the place where I had forgiven over and over again, where I was no longer needing to forgive, 
because I actually had done it. And guess what? I had a new feeling. You know what that new feeling was? Freedom. And how hard-headed I was to take that long to do it. And a question I want to ask some of us in here, you don't have to raise hands here, how many are being hard-headed? Needing to let go of something that's happened to you that you're holding on to. It's not worth it, saints. For who the Son has set free is what? I can walk in freedom today. And as I close here, I want to ask each and every one of us, during this week, over the next week, search your hearts. Lord, who am I holding unforgiveness towards? Maybe something very little. It may be something very big, but God wants you free in Jesus' name. It's about you living in faith and victory in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father God, I want to thank you and praise you for your word and for your truth of your word, Lord. Lord, how can we ever begin to even say thank you for the magnitude of your forgiveness, your grace, and your mercy. Well, there is one way we can say thank you. That's by forgiving those around us. You left us that example, Lord, for us to be free, for us to live in faith and victory. And Lord, Holy Spirit, as you search our hearts and minds today and over the next week or so, Lord, reveal to us as individuals those that we need through your grace and mercy to make that choice to take them off of our hook and put them on yours and allow you, Lord, to bring your justice the way that you see fit. And in your time and in your way, Lord. And Lord, may we walk around with great, great thanksgiving and appreciation and joy for the magnitude of our sins that have been forgiven. Your grace is unspeakable, so full of glory, so magnificent that you forgave our debt. Help us, Lord God, to be like you and forgive our debtors that we may walk in freedom and liberty, that we may walk in victory. And Lord, as we forgive our debtors, may we hold on to this truth. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. We thank you for this freedom and liberty. In your name we pray. And all God's people who agreed said, amen. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.